Well, good morning. It's Good Friday, and normally as a church we would be gathering together at Bethel, remembering the events of the very first Good Friday in Jerusalem. But today, it's unusual, isn't it? We can't be together physically, but we're still together in a sense, aren't we? We're, we're together, united by His Spirit, His Spirit that lives within us all, those who believe and are trusting in Jesus. So, Together in the spirit, let's come in our homes and let's remember the most life-changing event that this world has ever known. You see, what you believe about the events of that day will determine your eternal de destiny. So that makes this day very important. So have your Bibles open, please, at uh, Mark 15. And we're going to be reading from verses 33 to 41. And have your bread and, and your juice ready for a time of communion at the end of this message. And let's ask God um, to help us before we do this. Let's come to him in prayer as we solemnly rejoice in the events of that first Good Friday. Let's, let's pray. Father, we are thankful that we're here, we're, we're thankful that uh, we can remember with faith in our hearts the first Good Friday, we can remember exactly what you did for us by sending your son to die in our stead. Father, thank you. As we gather remembering that day, as we read a passage of scripture that, that speaks of that day, would our hearts again solemnly rejoice because all of it happened for our sake and father as we come around um, the communion table so to speak later on would you bless our hearts refresh our souls as we remember you and your love in jesus name amen so the question I'm asking this morning in our devotional time is, is why is Good Friday so good? Why do we call it Good Friday? Surely there is nothing good about this man, Jesus, dying on, on the cross. How can we call it good? So with that question in mind, let's, let's turn to the account written by, by Mark in Mark's Gospel and let's examine the events afresh, seeking to understand why this day had to happen in order to make us eternally safe. So let's start with the first verse. Mark 15 verse 33 says this, And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Jesus had been on the cross for three hours by now. At 9 a.m., they'd hammered in the nails. Three hours of excruciating pain. Three hours of sickening abuse from some of the people who were gathered around him. They were people who just didn't understand. It was now 12 noon, and the scene changed. All of a sudden, it went dark. We know it was all of a sudden because if you study the original Greek manuscript, the word used was the word you would use for switching something off, like, like a light switch. It was almost as if someone had switched off the lights and all, all the world, or well, certainly around Jerusalem, was plunged into darkness. God, because he is God, had switched off the sun. A very strange and a very unique supernatural event. Do you know people down the years have, have tried to argue that this was an eclipse? But eclipses don't last for three hours. And eclipses don't happen apparently when there is a, a full moon on the opposite side of the earth. And Passover always happened mid-month when there was a full moon on the opposite side of the earth. So this was not an eclipse. It was an act of Almighty God. 
Uh, and this event is not just recorded in the Bible, you know. Roman historians also wrote of, of this strange darkness coming over Judea at the time. The light of the sun had been switched off and the whole scene was plunged into total darkness. Everything was pitch black. Can you imagine it? One second bright sunlight, the next total darkness. You see, for years, the Pharisees and the others had been asking Jesus for a sign from heaven. As if all the miracles that he'd performed were not enough. No, they wanted more. Well, now they were getting it. God had switched off the sun. And all who were there were witnessing this supreme act of supernatural power. Some of them understood now what was going on. Like the Roman centurion who we'll come on to in a minute. But some of them still didn't get it. They still kept ridiculing him. So the darkness had descended. And darkness is, in the Bible is usually associated with, with judgment. God, at this moment in history, was judging sin, which is the only thing that God ever judges. He was punishing your sin and mine. God hates sin. He hates our sin. He's pure. He is holy. He had to act. He is just. He's the just judge. He had to judge. He had to punish. And the sovereign judge of the whole universe was in that moment judging his own son instead of us. Because of his great love for you and I, his son was taking the punishment that we deserve. We're the sinners, not him. Isaiah 53 describes what was happening. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he, Jesus, was crushed for our transgressions. He was, sorry, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. The judge was judging. It was very dark. Three hours. Then the cry rang out in the stillness. Mark 15 verse 34. Let's read on. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This cry pierced the darkness. The Greek word for cry here means scream. The dark silence was punctuated by this piercing scream from Jesus. My God, why have you forsaken me? Echoes of Psalm 22. Jesus at that precise moment was separated from his Father in heaven. God had turned his back on his son. And Jesus found the pain of separation unbearable. Jesus had known rejection all his life. As a baby, they tried to kill him, didn't they? As a man, they had ridiculed him, they had beaten him, they had spat on him, they had scourged him and, and jammed the crown of thorns into his head. He'd known rejection by his friends who had run away from him and deserted him. So he knew all about pain and rejection. But this pain, this rejection, being separated from the perfect communion he had with his father was just too much to bear. And he screamed into the darkness. Why have you forsaken me? The Apostle Paul says of Jesus in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For our sake he made him to be sin. Who knew no sin. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus. The innocent Lamb of God was being punished for us. He made him to be sin for us. 
our substitute was on the cross. We're the ones who'd sinned. We're the ones who'd gone our own way. We're the ones who had turned their backs on God. We should have been nailed to the tree, not Jesus. But God loves us so much that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The mercy of God, the love of God should overwhelm us this morning. When we look afresh upon the scene. Because it should have been you and me. We're the ones who should have been judged. But it wasn't. He was paying the price. He was paying the price for your sin and mine. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Then at three o'clock, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Let's read on verse 35. And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And, and someone ran and, and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. Again, it was a loud cry. This time, the Greek word is better translated shout. And we know from John's gospel that he shouted, it is finished. And at that precise moment, a couple of miles away, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. Don't miss the significance of this supernatural curtain ripping that was going on. You see, the temple had for centuries been hallowed by the Jews as a sacred place where the Shekinah glory of God resided. Solomon had built the temple a thousand years before and there in the temple was a room called the Holy of Holies and nobody was allowed into that room except one man, the high priest on one day, the Day of Atonement. He would enter through these thick curtains and sprinkle blood on the golden mercy seat, offering sacrificial blood on behalf of the nation to atone for their sins. This room and this curtain symbolized the fact that people were shut out from God's presence. But when the shout went out from Jesus, it is finished. At that precise moment, down came the the curtain torn in two from top to bottom the holy of holies was open to all and the new commandment the sorry the new covenant the new testament began the new testament times began no more day of atonement no more high priests no more priests, no more sacrificing, no more having to work your way into heaven through the rules. No. The barrier to God's presence had gone. The day of grace was inaugurated. The doorway to heaven was fully open. Our great high priest had offered the final sacrifice for sin once and for all. And now you and I who live in the New Testament times have been granted access into the very presence of God because of the blood sacrifice of Jesus. God has allowed you and I into his presence through the death of his son. All that remains is for you and I to believe. To believe. And to repent. To repent of the sin that, that had him pinned to the cross. And then to trust your life to him. Your eternal life. See afresh this morning the Son of God dying for you on that cross. See him making all of your wrongs right by being covered in the blood. See him granting you access into the very presence of God. See him granting you eternal life. The Roman soldier saw it in verse 39. 
And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. He was a man, he, he, at the foot of the cross, he was used to seeing men die. He, he was, had probably crucified hundreds, if not thousands of, of people. But Jesus was different. There at the foot of the cross, for the first time, he understood and he believed. He was the Son of God. And here was the final sacrifice. Can I ask you this morning, do you see what he saw? Is Jesus the Son of God to you? Do you believe? Then if you do, you will in your heart fully understand that this was the first good Friday. God on that Friday was good to you. No matter what happens during this pandemic, you are eternally safe because on that very first Good Friday, Jesus was good to you. Rejoice in that day, Christian. Remember that day, Christian. If you do believe, then why not join me now in an act of worship, giving thanks for his life, giving thanks for his death and his resurrection as we eat the bread and drink the wine together, something that we're commanded to do because our God knows how easily we forget. It's going to be unusual because this is the first time we've ever done it separately. But as we eat and as we drink in our homes separately, yet together by the Spirit, let us all give thanks for the one who died in our place. Let's pray. Father, as we come around this table of remembrance, as we partake of these elements, Lord, would you refresh our souls as we remember how the perfect Lamb of God was sacrificed for our sake. So in our homes, Lord, by your Spirit, lead us together now, we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Apostle Paul writes of that night when the, the Lord's Supper was inaugurated. He said this in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So why don't we take the bread now? Why don't we take the bread and break it? Let's give thanks for the bread. Lord, we're doing this in remembrance of you. You left heaven's glory. You came and lived amongst us. You showed us in your humanity and in your deity how we should live. Lord, you were subject to so much abuse for our sake. You were the man of sorrows who led the way. Father and Lord, your son, your son, was broken for us in many ways. So Lord, as we take part of this bread together in our homes, would we remember you afresh as we eat? In Jesus' name, amen. Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a 
same way after he took the cup also he took the cup after supper saying this is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes let's give thanks for the cup Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your precious blood poured out for sinners such as me and for those listening at home. Thank you that your blood makes us clean. Thank you that we are as white as snow now because of your saving grace on that cross. So again, as we drink and remember your sacrifice, may our hearts be uplifted together as we remember just how much you love us. Draw near unto us now, Lord, as we remember you. Thank you for the cup. Amen. Well, let's drink and remember together. Was he to die? It is finished, was his cry. this remembrance thank you for in the stillness of our homes you O oh Lord are with us Father these are different days this Good Friday is like no other Good Friday that we've ever known Lord there are many people who are hurting and suffering who need to understand Good Friday 
So we lift up our friends, we lift up our families, we lift up our colleagues, we lift up our neighbourhood, we lift up our nation and the world to you, O Lord. Speak. Speak into the lives of folk. Would they know you as the good shepherd of their souls who laid down his life for the sheep? Lord, would this Easter the angels be rejoicing over thousands upon thousands upon thousands of sinners who bow the knee in faith. Please, Lord, we lift up our loved ones to you now. We lift up the world to you now. Save, we pray, and let all rejoice in the good news of that first Good Friday and the Resurrection Sunday. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, remember, Sunday is coming. Jesus didn't stay dead, did he? He is risen. Can I hear hallelujahs out there? In the email that uh, John will have sent you, you'll find a video link that has become a bit of a tradition for me on Good Friday. It's of, a, of an old American pastor preaching his heart out. Have a listen on YouTube if you're able to. It's called, It's Friday, but Sunday, Sunday's coming. Now switch me off and, and go and listen and go and rejoice and I'll see you, God willing, on Sunday. Have a great day. See you Sunday. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter's are sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the world's winning, people are sinning, and evil's grinning. It's Friday, the soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something, Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, Hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. 
It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. 